video we are going to talk about direct connect virtual interfaces and direct connect gateways and normally you won't see people calling them virtual interfaces uh, normally you would see people calling them WIFs and that, that's what we are going to refer to them as WIFs right so now that when you have a direct connect connection established you have completed all the formalities and stuff everything is done how would you actually use a direct connect connection to basically access your resources in AWS right and for that purpose uh, AWS provides you WIFs so WIF is actually not an interface as the name suggests it's rather a configuration which has all the BGP and all the VLAN information and which you need to do at your end to basically establish connection between your data center and your AWS services either they could be public or public services or private services so like I said uh, WIF is basically of two types uh, they are public and private so public WIF public WIF this is basically used to access the services which are publicly accessible over internet in AWS services like S3 and SQS so these services are accessible over internet and cannot be accessed from a private IP so you need some kind of interface that lets you access these public services and this is what public uh, uh, WIF does for you then the second one is private WIF and this like the name suggests lets you access your services which are there in a private network something like uh, VPC so you have your VPC with your private IPs and basically you want to access your resources running in your VPC from your data center so for that you will be needing a private WIF and private WIF is attached to a VGW so this you should remember for your exam the private WIF is attached to a VGW so now what I'll do is basically go into AWS console and just give you an overview of how you create a public and a private WIF so you can see guys I'm in my direct connect console and since I don't have any direct connect connection that's why it's looking like this but once you have everything set up from the hardware end, that is your AWS direct connect location you would see a connection over here but since I don't have it I don't see any connection but talking about virtual interfaces you can see on the same menu there's a subheading called virtual interfaces we'll just go there and we'll click create virtual interface although we're not going to create any so now you see you're presented with three options so this is basically a recent addition uh, earlier it was just private and public so we'll not talk about transit probably it will not feature an exam uh, mostly you will see other questions about private or public interface so first let's look at public one so you need to give a name to your virtual interface you'll select the connection which you, you have already established then you need to tell the AWS account this WIF is for uh, normally it will be this account from where you are creating a WIF but if it's another account then you need to provide the account ID and mind you this would be verified then you need to give a VLAN ID so VLAN ID you can give anything you want 100 200 but just to make sure that that your VLAN ID should be unique that any other public WIF should not be using the same VLAN ID then you need to give a BGP ASN so normally I mean if you have an ASN number you I mean if you own an ASN then you give it over here otherwise you basically use the private ASN so private ASN list uh, is, is basically a reserved uh, list from 65,000 to I think 65,500 something I don't actually remember but yeah I would put that in description the number of uh, ASN which are reserved as private and you can use it then for IPv4 you need to give the router peer IP so this is your data center the router at your data center and for then for the Amazon router the I mean whatever router you have created at the Amazon end 
so these two things basically these these are the information you will get from i mean if you are you if you are talking to an asn partner amazon apn partner sorry so they will give you all this information or if you are using your hardware then you need to find all this information the router which you have configured at the aws direct connect location so these are the information about that and then you have the prefixes which you want to advertise and these are the basically the public pre ip addresses or ip addresses range or cider blocks which you want to advertise to your network and this range is i mean you can find it so aws provides a json file uh, called iprangers.json and it can be found on the internet you can just google it and you'll get that file which has all the public ip addresses of aws with the services users like sqs s3 so you'll find those ranges over there so that what basically goes here so the public ip which you want to advertise let's click additional setting let's see what's there and this is basically for bgp authentication so i mean if you don't know how bgp works then there's no point talking about it so basically bgp is an exterior gateway protocol egp and you can configure authentication at both ends like i mean if you know what is igp or egp then you would know what bgp authentication means and it's basically md5 and then you create your virtual interface all right now let's go to private this and see what's there so for private fifth almost all the information are same like the name connection I mean if it's a direct connect gateway if you're using or mostly it will be a virtual private gateway if it's just one-on-one -on -one, when we'll talk about direct connect gateway I'll show you how you can use a single private WIF to connect to multiple VPCs across multiple region but then for now let's just say a virtual private gateway so like i told you a private WIF connects to a, v, a virtual private gateway right same the bg vlan id and the bgp asn so in here you see you didn't have to provide the uh, what we had in public uh, WIF is that your router peer ip and the amazon router peer ip because since it's public uh, AWS automatically takes care of this for you but if you want to provide it there's still you have the option but you can see that it says that it, this setting is optional so you don't actually need to do this AWS will take care of this and then there's the MTU size so you can have jumbo frames as well so MTU of size 9001 is called jumbo frame a default size is 1500 bytes but if you want so this connection also supports jumbo frames and then you create your virtual interface and that's that's basically it about uh, public and private virtual interfaces so let's move on and see what is a direct connect gateway so a direct connect is a device that lets you combine multiple private WIFs uh, across multiple VGWs in the same or different region so what I'll do is basically I'll draw you a diagram that's uh, give you that will give you a very good understanding of what actually means before that uh, let's just go over some theory so let you combine private WIFs with multiple VGWs I've already told you that and let you connect from one direct AWS location direct connect AWS location in one region to any of the AWS region so yeah so this will be clear when I draw the image so let me draw the diagram for you so as you can see in the diagram, this is our AWS Direct Connect location. So we have the AWS router, we have the customer router, this is the private WIF, and this is our Direct Connect Gateway. And you can see from Direct Connect Gateway, we have multiple VPCs interconnected, and these VPCs either can be in the same region or they can be in different region like this one is in EU this is in US this is in AU and you can have like what I told you in theory that from one direct connect location in one region you can access different PPCs in different region so you can see how a basically direct connect uh, makes your life really easy 
and you I mean it, and it's just uh, and gives you a lot of functionality so with just one private wave you can access uh, resources across multiple multiple VPCs in multiple regions well I think this is it for this video guys I hope you like the video and learned something new today please don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that I can make more videos for you and bring in more content all right thank you for watching guys keep rocking